Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by the Guild. I am Tom Downey. Follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for more Cowboys coverage. We'll start things off with the latest Cowboys rumors. And first up, will it be a bounce back year for Dan Bailey? I'm actually going to go ahead and give it the four stars here. I think it will 100% be a bounce back season for Dan Bailey. In the last month of the year, Bailey was just not as good as the Cowboys are accustomed to. He was 7 of 12 on his field attempts, missed his last three from 23, 34, and 48. Also missed two extra points during that stretch. He never misses extra points. Hadn't missed one before that, so it was not a good year for Dan Bailey down the stretch. It was the groin injury that he battled with throughout the, the season. I think that was a big factor there. Dan Bailey was the most accurate kicker in NFL history before the end of last year. I don't know if he's going to take it back from Tucker after the season, but I think we'll be right back in line with those above 90% career averages we're so used to him having. All right, next up, do the Cowboys have a top 10 roster in the NFL? I'm actually going to give this one three stars. On the you know, pro, football, pro football focus, the Cowboys at number eight. I don't know if I'd put them above a team like the Rams, who they were above, maybe the Jaguars as well. But I do think that they are a top 10 roster on paper. And that's always been one of my biggest issues with the Cowboys. Talent-wise, they're definitely there, but they never seem to match. Their, their, their hold is not always matched to some of their parts, and that's always been an issue for me. And I think it's noteworthy, by the way, the Cowboys are the fifth-best team in the NFC. That's borderline playoff team with the Eagles, of course, being the number one team coming off that Super Bowl victory. So let me know what you guys think the Cowboys' record will be this season. I think it's going to be 10-6, and six, and my issue is I don't know if that's actually going to be enough to make the playoffs in a very, very tough NFC. All right, next up is Terrence Williams on the hot seat. I'm going to give this one three stars. Maybe not on the hot seat, though you guys want him to be. I do think that T-Will's roster spot is very much, or, or is, very, is secure for the time being, but I don't know if he's going to be locked into a starting spot. A Michael Gallup, I think, will heavily push for that role there. So we'll see what ends up happening in the end with Terrence Williams. I'll put it at three stars for now. He's very much on the hot seat. Thinks that DUI arrest, or not DUI, public intoxication arrest, excuse me, and for the foot injury. So he might not keep his roster or his starting job, but I do think he keeps his roster spots. Let me know what you guys want the Cowboys to do with T. Will. Give me a heart for a start or to start him, a like for a bench him, a wow face for a cut, and a, a surprise or a wow face for a trade, and a laughy face for a cut. I think the most likely outcome is the Cowboys bench him. He becomes their kind of number four receiver behind Hearns, Gallup, and and uh, and Beasley throughout the season. But he can still play a role for the Cowboys, even though he's not the player everyone wants him to be. Speaking of wide receivers, is Lance Lenore going to make the roster? I'm only going to give it the one star for now, but there is some semblance of truth to this. He's pushing hard to make the Cowboys roster. He and Dak seem to get along pretty well. There's some chemistry there, which makes sense because a lot of these receivers... Dak doesn't have much chemistry with because they're brand new players. He is a dark horse option in what I consider to be a deep body count wise wide receiver group. The Cowboys like him and he has that special news value. I think these are your top five guys in some order right now. Hearns, Beasley, Gallup, t Will, and then Deontay Thompson. And then you got Cedric Wilson. We'll put Tavon on there just to make note of him. Noah Brown, I think, are all ahead of Lance Lenore. I know some of you guys like KD Cannon. I know he's fast. He's still very, very raw. I'd be surprised if he made the Cowboys 53-man roster. Maybe he becomes a special or a practice squad option instead. Next up is Zeke, the Cowboys MVP. I'm going to give it three stars. And the Dallas Morning News ranked the Cowboys players from 99 to 100, or not 99, but uh, down from uh, last first spot to the, to the most important player. And Zeke was their top guy, and I get it. Look, the offense is going to run through Ezekiel Elliott. And I, I understand their grading criteria, and I get that Zeke is the Cowboys MVP. That's why I give it the three stars. I will make note, though, if you want to approach it as who is the player the Cowboys will miss the most if there's an injury, I still think it might be Sean Lee. We, we saw that many a time in the past last year. The Cowboys defense struggles badly without Sean Lee, but I get that Zeke is probably the Cowboys uh, MVP. And at the end of the year, I would not be surprised if he won the Cowboys MVP award and if he's in the mix for the actual NFL MVP this season. Speaking of offense, is the Cowboys' biggest worry a lack of another dynamic weapon? I'll give this one two stars. Comes to us from Tim Kalashaw. And I get his argument, namely that outside of Ezekiel Elliott, who is the player that opposing defenses will fear? It's not Jason Witten. He's gone. It's not Des Bryant. And even though those guys were not the same player that they were in their primes, 
the defenses still often paid a good amount of attention to them. Now, hopefully it's a guy like Alan Hearns. Maybe it's a Cole Beasley. Maybe Gallup thrives in his first year. Or maybe it's Tavon Austin as, as a athlete, halfback, wide receiver type hybrid. But I will make note, I am still very concerned about the defensive line. That's actually my biggest worry. That's why I only gave it the two stars on that one. We'll get to, to the latest on Jason Garrett's future, but first, it was from our sponsor, The Guild. This one again is Jason Garrett out. Dallas misses the playoffs. Well, if you've been paying attention to us, you're going to know the answer to this one. It's going to be three stars with Dallas Morning News. Namely, John Machado also chimed in and said he does think Garrett is likely gone if the Cowboys fail to make the playoffs. And I'll make note the same note that John makes. That assumes there aren't any extenuating circumstances. If there are major injuries, i.e. a Dak Prescott injury, then you can see Garrett staying, getting another chance. Like, if Dak Prescott gets hurt before the year starts, as long as the Cowboys don't go 0-16, I think that Jason Garrett might get another shot. I do think it's likely, though, if Dallas misses the playoffs, I think Garrett's time is up in Dallas. So let me know, folks, who you guys want as the Cowboys head coach in 2019. Let me know in the comments section. I'll be sure to respond to those as well. All right, next up, will it be a breakout year for Xavier Woods? I know some of you guys like Woods. I like him a lot as well. I am giving this one three stars. It's not set in stone. But I think it's pretty likely. I think that Woods now is going to be a full-time safety, not splitting time between safety and nickel corner, is going to have a good season for the Cowboys. Now, he's not going to be Earl Thomas this year. That's an unfair expectation. I think he's going to emerge as a potentially reliable starting safety. Maybe he's not a true number one guy this year, but I think he can be a number two guy for the Cowboys as a good, reliable safety. Not Darren Woodson, but a talented player in his own right. I'm excited to see how Woods fares this season. I think he'll be a good player. All right, next up, could Cameron Brait head to the Dallas Cowboys? I'm only going to give this one the one star. Hadn't even actually planned on talking about it, but Bleach Report and SP Nation said, hey, the Cowboys should trade for Cameron Brait. And yes, Brait is talented. Yes, the Bucks have O.J. Howard. And yes, the Cowboys have a need at tight end. But the Bucks really like Cameron Brait, and they sent him to a six-year, 40, called $41 million deal. It's tradable because there's not a whole lot of locked-in guarantee money. The assignment bonus comes more in the in the, uh, the first year uh, salary being guaranteed. The trade offer for Bleacher Report was great for a second round pick. I actually don't like that deal for the Cowboys. I think that the Cowboys say no. I think the Bucks might also say no. They really like Cameron Braid a lot. They like that two tight end combo of Braid and OJ Howard. And most importantly, I don't think Cameron Braid fits with Dallas. Cameron Braid is not a good blocker. That's the opposite of what the Cowboys want. If the Cowboys want a pass catching only tight end, just stick with Rico Gathers. Don't go trading for Cameron Braid, who I like, but I just don't think it makes sense. I think the Cowboys say no, and I hope they would as well. A second round pick for Braid is just too rich. All right, folks, I am Tom Downey. Follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for more Cowboys coverage. Piggybacking off that Cameron Braid discussion, we're going to take you through seven players the Cowboys to, could, the, uh, seven players the Cowboys could, could, could trade for who are not named Earl Thomas. So we'll start with Corey Coleman of the Cleveland Browns. And the Browns have said they are willing to trade Coleman, quote, at the right price. Now, I don't really know what at the right price is. I don't know if, if it's a, a third round pick, a fourth round pick, a fifth round pick. I'm not super sure. But I do think the Cowboys should have interest in Coleman, a former first round pick out of Cleveland, a manageable cap hit. And as for the Browns, why it makes sense for them, Look, they've got enough bodies at wide receiver. I think that they, that they can afford to make a move and trade away Corey Coleman. They're in good shape with guys like Josh Gordon, like Josh Gordon. They drafted Antonio Callaway as well. As for my trade projection here, the Browns get a fifth-round pick and Noah Brown. Now, we'll get to the who says no here in a second. I do want to know what you guys think. When we did this on NFL Daily, some of you guys said that was too much to give up for Corey Coleman. I disagree, of course. but And I know some of you guys like Noah Brown. The reality is he's done next to nothing in the NFL. you got to trade a wide receiver because you just have too many bodies anyway. I think a fifth-round pick, I don't know if it's enough to get Corey Coleman. I think the Browns might say no if a team says no. But if I'm the Cowboys, I do it. Yes, you lose a player that I like in Noah Brown, but you do get a Corey Coleman who could become a borderline number one receiver for you. Corey Coleman, my way up, could be a nice building block for the future for you. 
All right, next up, let's go to defense. How about Dominique Easley, a kid that I've always liked out of Florida. And the Rams, by the way, are very, very deep now on the defensive line. We'll go through kind of their depth chart here. They're in great shape. All right, Nanama Kinsu, Aaron Donald, Michael Brockers, Ethan Westbrooks. They spent relatively high picks on a guy like John Franklin Myers and later on picks on Tanzil Smart, Justin Lawler out of SMU, and Sebastian Joseph Day from Rutgers. The Rams have a plethora of defensive linemen. The Cowboys don't. We know that because of the injuries to Millie Collins and the suspension pending for David Irving. So how about a sixth-round pick for Dominic Easley, who reports have said is on the roster bubble, and the Cowboys get a guy that can play some three technique for you. When Collins comes back, he can be your one technique. Chad Ward can play both ways. It gives you some added depth. I think it's a pretty fair trade for both sides. Again, we'll get to the reaction point in a second. Let me know what you guys think. The Cowboys, I think, need more defensive bodies. I think Dominique Easley... Uh, some other guys we'll discuss later, brings you the pass rushing ability that the Cowboys covet in defensive tackles. So let me know if neither team says no, give me a heart. If both teams say no, give me a like. If the Cowboys say no, give me a laughy face. And if the Rams say no, give me a wow face. We'll stick on defense now, go to the secondary. How about TJ Green? Now, Green is an interesting player because I actually have a tough time evaluating his proper trade value. He's kind of stuck behind the depth chart for the Colts, behind guys like Malik Hooker and Clayton Gathers. The Colts moved to corner for a week and then said, nope, this is a bad idea. We moved him back to safety. A former second round pick out of Clemson. The upside is still there, but I think he's kind of an odd man out in Indy, but I don't know what the Colts would get back in parting ways with a former second round pick. So I've given them a conditional sixth round selection go up to a fifth, maybe a bit higher if Green really plays out of his mind, but it gives the Cowboys needed secondary depth in addition to guys like Kayvon Frazier, Jeff Heath, Xavier Woods. I think you need a fourth guy. TJ Green could be that guy, or maybe even the Cowboys want to make TJ Green into a corner, even though he didn't fare all that well in that role in Indianapolis. So let me know, folks, who says no. Cowboys get TJ Green, and the Colts get a sixth-round selection. All right, next up, let's go to the Cleveland Browns here on the Cowboys Report, brought to you by The Guild. Derek Kindred, and this, I think, is kind of more of a Kayvon Frazier upgrade slash replacement. A safety who had 11 tackles for loss. You don't often see that in the NFL. Now, I like Kindred quite a bit. I know that the Browns do, but Demarius Randall is now their free safety. That leaves Derek Kindred getting replaced by Jabril Peppers as a strong safety. So there's not really a spot for him. The Browns can play him as kind of a dime linebacker, but they're actually already super deep at linebacker as it is. So that makes him, at least to me, a trade candidate. So the Browns get a fifth round pick back in, much like the Corey Coleman trade. I'm actually not sure if it's enough. Is it enough for the Browns, probably with a former fourth round pick, who can play a good role for you, and in reality, I think would be a cave on Frazier, potentially upgrade replacement type, especially on early downs. It does kind of suck for Frazier, but it gives the Cowboys added depth and safety. They can now go four deep to rotate all these guys and don't have to rely on just one player playing one role. And I think in reality, the Cowboys want to kind of shuffle their snap and safety, not make one player play every snap each game. But let me know, folks, who says no? The Cowboys, Browns, neither team, or both teams. We'll keep it rolling now. We'll go to the defensive line. How about Daniel McCullers? And he played only 13 snaps last year. He very quickly fell out of favor with the Steelers and was replaced by Javon Hargrave. And Pittsburgh this year went ahead and drafted Joshua Frazier. Now, that was a late-round pick, but I think McCullers is very much on the chopping block here for Pittsburgh. So the Cowboys, much like the Daniel Price trade, or Brian Price, excuse me, Brian Price trade, they give up a late seventh-round pick conditional. If it doesn't make the roster, it, it ends up not being anything, kind of like the uh, Christian Hackenberg trade. And the Cowboys get another big guy that could help be a run stopper for the for the for Dallas. And again, I think that's a role that they need right now. I like David Irving when he's on the field. I like Malik Collins as a pass rusher. We'll see how Jod Ward fails, and I, I like Dayton Jones, but I don't fully trust trust Brian Price. I want another run stuffer. Maybe that's a Richard Ash. Maybe that's Antoine Woods. But I at least call about Daniel McCullers if I was the if I was the Cowboys. He's going to be maybe the number two, number three guy for at nose guard. The Cowboys, the Steelers won't carry any more than three, probably more like two. So if McCullers is going to get cut, you might be able to get him for basically free a seventh round selection. We'll stick kind of here with the defensive tackle mindset, and we'll go to a Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive lineman, Stevie Tuikolavatu. Fun name to say there, folks. So Stevie. 
Missed his rookie year with a knee injury, and I think is going to be the odd man out for the Bucks. I think he'd fit well, though, with the Dallas Cowboys as a one technique and a 4-3 scheme. Some upside coming out of USC, but was a late-round pick because he offers nothing in the passing game. But think of it again, like a Brian Price trade. The Bucks might cut him because they're actually pretty deep at defensive tackle. They've got Bo Allen, Mitch Unring, of course, my boy Vita Vea, who I wanted so, so badly, and Gerald McCoy. So in this trade projection, the Bucks get a seventh-round selection, and Dallas gets Stevie Tua Kolovatu, a run-stopping defensive tackle. So a very similar one there. Let me know who says no in this trade. Give me a heart for neither team, a like for both teams, a laughy face for the Cowboys, and a wow face for the Bucks. All right, one final trade projection here for you guys. We'll go back to offense. How about a tight end that I think makes more sense than Cameron Brait? Now, Max Williams, a former second-round pick I really liked coming out, is clearly no longer in the Baltimore Ravens' long-term plans. They drafted not one, but two tight ends this year. They took Hayden Hurst in round one, and then double-dipped and took Mark Andrews after that. They have Nick Boyle on the roster, who's a better blocker than I think Max Williams is. I think the Ravens carry three guys. Why not trade Max Williams? And if you're going to cut him, which I think is the outcome here if Baltimore doesn't trade him, get something back. Get a seventh-round pick. Now, the condition here, I guess, for the Cowboys is namely either there are injuries up front or the tight ends do not emerge in the way that you want them to. So it's a late-round pick for the Cowboys. They get a chance to take a flyer on a Max Williams. Maybe it's a conditional pick that can become more valuable if Williams is a starter or something along those lines. But I think it gives the Cowboys a chance to have a better player at tight end, upside-wise. Now, Williams has his issues. He's always hurt, at least has been hurt a lot for the Baltimore Ravens. But it's a low-risk flyer that I would like to see the Cowboys try to take at the tight end spot if the guys on the roster have issues working out. All right, folks, get your questions in the comment section for our next mailbag. Love to do those, and I know you guys like those as well. And a big thank you to the Guild for sponsoring today's show. Visit stayguild.com, promo code CHATSPORTS for 15% off your next day. Kind of like a luxury Airbnb. If you guys missed anything on Facebook, don't worry. We'll play it again here in just a second. Until then, we'll see you next time.